Hi guys, I'm here today to do round two of my five star TBR pile predictions. So I'm going to link round one down below. I'm going to link the original TBR video and then my sort of wrap up of the first five books I chose. So you can go and hear my thoughts there. So if you haven't seen those videos and you don't feel like watching them very briefly, what the concept of this is, is that back in April I decided to look at all the unread books I own, which was around 340 in April and is still around 340 now because I accumulate books as fast, if not faster, than I read them. So I look at all those books I own and I choose five books out of the 340 odd that I think I'm most likely to absolutely love and put in my favourite books of the year list. Now, what I found is that out of the five I chose in the first go round, only one of the books made it. And not only did only one of the books make it to my sort of, you know, books that I will put in my favourite books of the year, but the other four all got rated two and a half stars or less out of five, which is poor for me, like that's a bad rating. So it turns out I'm awful at predicting my own book tastes and yeah so this time around I put more effort in and I briefly mentioned this in my wrap up video of the last five and said I would explain that a bit more. So the first time around what I did is, uh, is I sort of looked at my shelves and just pulled books off I had like a good feeling about you know when you buy new books or get new books in the library there's some books that you just have a feeling about whether it's based on um, the way they're described or like a sentence you read from them or, or whatever you think you're gonna love it. So that was sort of how I, I viewed it. I didn't put massive research into it. It was more of a, those books sound good, have a good feeling about them, I'm going to pick those. I put more effort in this time because I failed so badly last time. So my aim for this time is for three out of the five books to make it to my favourite books of the year. It'd be great if that happened. It'd be great if my predictions are that strong. You know, the thing is, you'd think I'd be able to, at 340 odd, there should be like more than five, five star reads. Um, there should be, otherwise that's quite depressing. And I'm quite a harsh rater, but still there should be more than five, so I should be able to guess them. So, what I did this time to guess is, yeah, I pulled books off my shelves that I had a really good feeling about. Um, so I ended up pulling maybe 30, 35 books off my shelves. And then I read the blurbs again. I read the first couple of pages again, and I read a couple of pages a bit further into the book. I find it's good to get an idea of the writing style um, from sections of the book that aren't the start because and um, they've got into their rhythm then. Um, all these books I enjoyed all those sections. Then I looked at the uh, the star rating on Goodreads. That didn't really um, sway me that much. These all have really different star ratings, some of them much higher than others. Um, but what I then did is I then found people I'm friends with on Goodreads that I know through YouTube and watch their channels or people who are regular commenters and I trust their recommendations and I read their reviews and if you know most of those had given these books four or five stars that was good. And then what I did is I then found all the low star ratings on Goodreads for these books, so sort of two stars or one star, and I read people's reasoning for that. Um, I really enjoy reading and watching negative reviews. I think negative reviews are as helpful as positive reviews. And I know not everyone agrees with me on that. Um, some people don't enjoy doing negative reviews because it is negative. But um, I think they're really helpful to um, stop people from wasting time. And so what I did was, is I read all these negative reviews and I sort of based on the way people had described their reading tastes and, and how these books didn't meet them, I sort of assessed whether I was a similar sort of reader to those reviewers. And if I felt like I wasn't, um, so for example, if someone had said, oh, there wasn't much plot to this book, it was quite slow paced, I know that doesn't bother me, um, so that was fine. So all of these books, I felt like the negative descriptions weren't things that would put me off. So that's the research I've done to come to these five, and I'm hoping that my guesses are better this time around. So I'm not going to talk loads about these books because you've seen me haul them all before. Um, I'll link them all down below so you can go and find out more about the plot and all that if you if you really want to. So the first one is um, A Line Made by Walking by Sarah Baum. This came out in January I believe of this year and I've wanted to read it since then, I've owned it since then and just haven't got around to it. I'm putting it off and I have been putting it off because I believe it's quite a quiet, slow paced, introspective novel um, about a lady around my age who's dealing with depression and struggling with you know what she should do with her life and um, university is finished and, and sort of questioning what do you do now. Um, they're things I struggle with so I was wondering if it was going to be a bit too close to the bone so I've been avoiding it and um, I've heard really good things about it and I just really want to get to this author. This is her second novel and I like the sound of both of her books so I'm hoping this could be um, a really great read. So there's that. 
And then we have two books by Canadian authors. The only book that I enjoyed out of the last five was a Canadian book, so I thought I'd stick with my Canadian books. And I pulled loads of Canadian books off my shelves, um, and these are the two I decided to go for in the end. This is All My Puny Sorrows by Miriam Taves, and this very nearly made the list last time, and I don't really know why it didn't in the end. I guess it got pushed out by um, the other books that I ended up not enjoying. So this is a contemporary novel, and I think she's fairly well known in Canada. And it's about two sisters, one who's a very successful musician but is incredibly depressed and wants to commit suicide, and one who's sort of down on her luck but really loves life and wants her sister to carry on living, and it's about the relationship they have and how they deal with this. I read the first few pages, um, I felt so sucked in by the narrative voice, and the reviews for this are excellent. The only negative reviews I saw, people said they didn't feel connected to the characters, I don't think I'm going to have that issue based on feeling so connected on the few pages I've read from the book. And another thing is that from what I've heard this is quite autobiographical, I believe um, the author's own sister did commit suicide, so I feel like this is going to handle it really well and feel really sort of rawly honest. So there's that one. And the other Canadian book I have is completely different to that, it's a historical novel which is touched by Alexei Zentner. Now, I've wanted to read this for a while, um, this is a story that's set in a place called, I'm not going to pronounce this right, Sogumo, which I think was a gold mining village when it was originally founded. Um, this follows a family who are the descendants of Anglican priests, and it follows this family through several generations, and intertwined with the family's story of um, eking a living out there in, in this area, is the, the story of the sort of mythology of the First Nations um, belief system and I believe um, one of the men in the story sort of hears voices talking to him from the forest. So it's a real blend of stories about the Canadian wilderness and First Nations people's um, traditional lives and um, the invasion of people from other parts of the world and the destruction of, of some of those lives with mythical elements. So I think this could be a strong one. Then we have a bit of a weird book. Um, I struggle to put weird books on this five star prediction because I own loads of weirder books, but they're more of a risk with five stars because um, I think it's really difficult to, sust to sustain weird storylines for an entire novel. I tend to enjoy magical realism more in short story form, but I felt like I wanted to be brave and, and choose one. So I went for The Knife Door by Patricia Tarrant, which is perhaps very brave because this is around 360 pages, which I think is quite long to sustain a weird storyline. But I love the sound of this. This is set in a weird, crumbling Victorian mansion, and we have characters from the, or maybe not a mansion, um, a Victorian house, it says. Um, and we have chapters from the perspective of the house, um, chapters from the perspective of the mice that live in the house, chapters from the perspective of the knives that are in the knife drawer in the house, um, chapters from the perspective of somebody called the mother who seems to be sort of losing her mind a bit within this house. Um, it's supposed to be a uh, Victorian Gothic um, with loads of fairy tale elements and just weirdness. However, I read quite a few reviews from people who'd really loved it and said that they felt that people who didn't like weird books wouldn't enjoy it because it's, it's fairly long. For, for a weirder book, but they felt that people who did would really love it and they felt like it was sustained excellently throughout. So there's that one. The last one I think a lot of people will know about, um, it's The Lie Tree by Frances Hardinge. So many people have said to me they think I'll really, really enjoy this book. And I have the Chris Riddle illustrated edition, which I think will bump this book up. Um, this is, I think, a Victorian um, novel from a, a young girl's perspective. It deals with the theory of evolution, feminism, and some uh, magical elements. So all those things sound wonderful, and obviously it's got the beautiful illustrations to go with it. So there's that. Then, in this video, I decided to include a few bonus books. Um, and the reason these are bonus books and not within the core five is because they're not novels. And I think I struggle um, more with non-novels making this prediction. So I chose a short story collection. Now, I own um, probably around 30, 35 unread short story collections. And so I felt like I should choose at least one. Um, this is the one out of all the short story collections I own I have the highest hopes for. This is Portable Childhoods by Ellen Clage. This is a fabulous magical realism collection. Uh, the reason I, I am more nervous about putting a short story collection in is because um, having thought about it a bit more since um, including a short story collection in the last one and hating it, I haven't given many short story collections five stars. I've given a lot four and a half stars but not many five because usually there's a few stories in each collection that aren't as good. Um, and usually they stop me from giving it five. 
but I just wanted to say that out of all the short story collections I own this is the one I feel the strongest about so I've got um, fairly high expectations for this one and then I included two non-fiction books very very briefly um, I don't read as much non-fiction really want to read a lot more non-fiction and have been accumulating a lot more non-fiction on my shelves and I'm more nervous to include non-fiction because obviously um, I don't know my tastes as much and it's more of a scary thing but of all the non-fiction I own I'm most excited about these two they're very different books this is The New Jim Crow, Mass Incarceration and the Age of Colour Blindness by Michelle Alexander. Um, I have been watching documentaries about this sort of thing for years um, and I've been reading more books that deal with racism in the US recently. Um, but this is the one that really hits home on my specific area of interest which is um, incarceration. And I've seen the 13th documentary which was phenomenal. Um, the author is in that documentary um, and I really enjoyed all the things she said and obviously this, this book is going to be way more in depth on all of those things. Um, people say it's a bit academic so that's my only concern with it but hopefully I'll really enjoy this. And then the other is a memoir. This is a mixture of, um, this is Riverine, a memoir from Anywhere But Here by Angela Palm. And it's a mixture of um, the author going back to her hometown in rural Indiana and sort of analysing the meaning of home, um, really scoping out what it's like to live in an area like where she came from. So I, I love that. I love the, the, the concept of home and um, nostalgia for a place. And I love the discussion, the intimate discussion and portrayal of people from a place that I know very little about. But also wrapped up in that is the fact that her childhood sweetheart um, it has been put in prison for murder. And so she begins to go and meet him in prison and discuss with him, um, you know, what happened. And sort of analyse how the life he led in the place where she's from got him to, to where he is today. Um, so again deals with, with prison and the concept of whether one crime defines somebody which is something I find really interesting and spend quite a lot of time thinking about so and I've read so many pages of this um, whilst deciding for this video and it's beautiful and um, lots of people said it's very pretentious which is why I'm a bit nervy um, but I think it's incredibly lyrical it's the sort of writing style that I just wish wish I could do so very wordy um, but just love it so fingers crossed so yeah those are my predictions we have the core five and then we have the three that I'm slightly more sort of nervous about committing to. So I'd love to hear if you've read these books, what you think of them, and what you think of my reasoning, whether you think I'm gonna have more luck this time. And also I'd love to know if you have any predictions for yourself. Um, I'd love to see video responses or if you have a blog um, or feel free to um, get in touch with me on Twitter or Instagram. I will put um, a hashtag along here so you can um, See about that and I am on Instagram I keep forgetting to say this so feel free to follow me over on Instagram and I'd love to find more bookish um, Instagram accounts to follow because there's never enough is there so yeah thanks for watching I really enjoyed doing these videos and I'll see you in the next one bye